Hiya, today I'm here to talk to you about the different types of volcano and there are two key types of volcano that you need to know for your uh, upcoming exam. The first being a shield volcano, second being a composite cone volcano. Now a shield volcano tends to form on a constructive plate boundary. If you're not sure what that is, there's a video on my channel and a link in my description to that video to watch that and refresh your memory. Now on constructive plate boundaries, we tend to get thin, runny lava with a low viscosity. Now viscosity is a word that can be used to describe how thick and stodgy a liquid is. So if a liquid has a low viscosity, that means it's very thin and very runny. So when this magma erupts as lava, it's very thin and very runny. So therefore the lava can travel over a longer distance before it solidifies. So as a result, when this lava erupts and travels, it produces these very wide, gently sloping sides with a very wide base at the bottom as this lava is able to run a long distance before solidifying. Now the magma itself is basaltic magma, and basaltic magma tends to have a low silica content. Now silica is a chemical that can affect the viscosity of magma. If it has a low silica content, it tends to be of a low viscosity, a runny um, magma. Now so it's got a low silica content, and it also has a low gas content. Gases are very important with regards to eruptions, as if we've got a high gas content, we tend to get very explosive eruptions. Now this shield volcano has a low gas content, so the eruptions are not very explosive. So all of this combines to produce a volcano whose eruptions tend not to be very violent, so they're not violent, but it does erupt more frequently because of this runny magma that tends not to get any blockages within the vent itself. Second is a composite cone volcano. Now composite cone volcanoes are essentially the opposite of a shield volcano. They're found on destructive plate boundaries rather than constructive plate boundaries. The lava and magma tend to be viscous and sticky rather than runny. So because it's viscous and sticky, that means as the lava erupts, it's not able to travel for a very long distance before it solidifies. And that means we get these very steep sides produced with a very narrow base along the bottom. Now the magma type this time is andesitic magma, and this has a high gas content. Now remember, because it's got a high gas content, that means we're going to get quite explosive uh, explosions starting to, to, to occur, very explosive eruptions occurring. Um, and it has a high silica content. Because it's a high silica content, that means it's very viscous, a high viscosity, and it's very sticky. As a result of all this combined, we get eruptions that are very violent rather than not very violent, as we found in the shell volcano, but the eruptions are infrequent because of the high silica content and the high viscous magma causing blockages quite frequently within the vents. Now, because of these blockages, we tend to get a buildup of gas content, and when the blockages are released, we get very explosive and violent eruptions.